Hello. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to consider um, Curly. So uh, Joseph uh, Lego Man has asked me, and so has Olivia Meek, and a few others over the last week. Uh, so let's consider uh, why Steinbeck creates Curly in Of Mice and Men. Well, one of the most significant things, and the first things we find out about Curly, is that he's won the Golden Gloves competition, which is an amateur boxing competition in America, um, that uh, you basically become the champion of the whole country. And I googled images for 1937, so you can see how many people would turn up to watch about. Uh, so this is a tournament in 1937. And you can see what a popular sport it is. Here are how many rings are on offer. Um, and the reason I'm showing you this is I'm trying to show you what the 1930s view of masculinity was, what it meant to be a, a man. And that was clearly linked to violence. Uh, I scanned through for a picture that gave me a mental image of what Curly might look like. Uh, so not large, but lean and muscular. There is a kind of arrogant expression um, to his face and self-confidence in his ability to inflict pain on others. Now, Steinbeck uses this to suggest that um, Curly also enjoys this kind of power by virtue of being the boss's son. So not only is he a natural fighter, he also has the other advantage of um, other men not being able to approach him as an equal. And uh, Candy points out how it's not fair that the little guy, Curly, can always pick on the big guy and either he wins the fight and therefore um, looks incredibly uh, powerful himself uh, and more masculine, or he loses but the big guy gets blamed because he's he's been picking on someone much smaller than him. Uh, and when we look at it like that, we can see that the context of... Um, Curly's life is all about fighting. So he does it as a recreational sport, but that's also the way he behaves on the ranch. And Steinbeck isn't suggesting that Curly does this because he himself is a bad man. He's using Curly to suggest that actually this is what many men are like, and give them the opportunity to be violent, then they will become violent as a first choice. It's an opportunity they seize. Uh, next, I've gone to uh, the Chicago Tribune of March 1937, and you can see that the Golden Gloves competition is part of the front page. This is an image of what masculinity is, um, and you can see how sporting, um, so physically fit, men were required to be. So here you've got um, baseball players on the front page, You've got cyclists on the front page. Uh, more boxing down here. A baseball match here. So everything in 1937 seems to be about combat, either sporting combat or fighting uh, redone as sport. So male competition and male violence is how men define themselves in the 1930s. And it's how they sort out their hierarchy within the novel. And we can also see this played out through advertising here. So here's some adverts um, for Soap's Whiskers Softer. And uh, you can see that sporting men from three different sports are used to advertise this product. And further on, even alcohol is described in terms of how violent it can be. So the alcohol is linked to the idea of a boxer and what punch it can pack and how this is He-Man stuff. So Steinbeck is reacting against this view of masculinity and his novel is trying to show how this sense of masculinity is wrong. So if we return to our view of Curly, um, the men object to the Vaseline that he puts on his hand inside the glove for two reasons. One is because he lets them know he's done it and therefore he's um, trying to improve his social status, uh, showing the other men on the ranch that he has attracted 
an attractive sexual young lady to be his wife and he's advertising her sexuality which they resent but something else that's quite interesting is they object to the fact that he's softening this hand because their view of masculinity is that you're supposed to be rough and violent and they can't understand subconsciously if you like why someone who is violent themselves an accomplished boxer would choose softness and so they're quite offended at any sort of tenderness between the husband and wife and interestingly um, this tenderness if there is any is completely ignored by Curly's wife herself um, so one way of looking at Curly is as a man who would like to escape um, this stereotype of what it is to be a man but he has no way of doing it uh, so when he does uh, soften his hand with Vaseline it's um, an attempt to become a softer human being but he fails in this regard because Curly's wife still dislikes him she only sees his meanness and perhaps Steinbeck is suggesting that that's the nature of being a man in 1930s America that you actually can't escape that violence because of what society is like and society has been made this way because everyone is trying to escape poverty life if you like becomes a fight and it becomes um, a struggle for dominance and men are cast in that light perhaps not through their own choice well that's one way of looking at it um, the other could be uh, as an analysis of human nature to say that actually all men are by nature uh, violent and barbaric and the poverty of the times is simply revealing uh, taking the clothes off if you like what um, male nature is actually like and Curly is just an embodiment of that Steinbeck plays with this idea of masculinity and Curly in the novel uh, so we're introduced to his golden gloves but then one of those gloves becomes transformed as it's the vehicle for the Vaseline that's going to keep one hand soft and typically one of these hands is what is going to be crushed by Lenny when he finally um, stops Curly hitting him so Steinbeck could be suggesting here that the violence of men will always turn in upon itself so it becomes self-destructive so Curly lives by violence and also is crushed by it and similarly Lenny lives by violence not through choice he just doesn't know how to resist his own strength and therefore dies by violence so this is part of Steinbeck's theme to show how men can't escape their own violent natures if Curly is also a stereotype of a man who is unable to express his feelings properly and unable to um, escape violence we see this at the end of the novel when uh, he and Carlson can't understand why George is so upset at having killed Lenny they just don't get it Carlson asks now what the hell do you suppose is eating them two guys uh, they are the embodiment of violence and they can't understand why the other men in this case George doesn't relish that violence um, and instead um, George is disappointed by the violent act he has to commit so that's our final use for Curly he is a counterpoint to George in other words George could have turned out like Curly but Steinbeck is offering us a better way a man who resorts to violence only as a last resort um, hopefully you'll remember that George used to bully Lenny um, used to beat him up because he knew that Lenny wouldn't fight back that's exactly what Curly's like in the novel but then he learns a better way so through George Steinbeck is suggesting that men can be less like Curly uh, and more like George then the question we're left with at the end of the novel is well is George's version of masculinity um, one to aspire to or is he also still trapped 
in a world of violence and um, the seeking of dominance in a social hierarchy. And that's something that you have to decide according to your reading of the novel. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if you'd like more revision videos, don't forget to subscribe.